Hello, everybody. Thanks for uh, coming to this uh, presentation. My name is Alberto Mardegan, and I'm going to talk to you about the blockchain. And no, we are not going to compute any next prime numbers. The title is uh, trying to make a bit of fun about all the hype that there is around the blockchain and how sometimes it's uh, shown as the solution to any kind of uh, problems. Uh, so, anyway, I will start by giving a small introduction of the blockchain. Unfortunately, yesterday when I was rehearsing my presentation, I realized that all the detailed explanation that I had prepared would lead to me to overrun like the available uh, time. So, I'm sorry, but I will give you just a very, um, very high, high level uh, presentation with many black spots. Maybe the, we, if we will have more time, maybe even during the questions, if you have precise questions, I can try to address them. Um, but anyway, I'm terribly sorry, but uh, yeah, that's the situation. And if, if you need to know more, either you can talk to uh, me uh, later, or you can actually find plenty of material in the internet, plenty of uh, videos that are probably going to explain it in a better way than I would be able to. Uh, so, uh, I think it's easier if we think about uh, Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin because it's the most uh, famous uh, implementation of a blockchain, it's the oldest, and also uh, many, not all, but many, most of the aspects that are uh, implemented in the um, Bitcoin protocol are also present in uh, many other blockchain implementations. So we start with a peer-to-peer -peer network, which is uh, distributed and decentralized. Uh, it's a bit important to spend a couple of seconds to talk about these two words, distributed and decentralized. In English, they are almost synonyms. They can be used most of the times interchangeable. But in this context, uh, it's uh, very important to uh, tell them apart. So when we talk about decentralized, we uh, talk about power, decision making. And a uh, decentralized system is a system where uh, there isn't a single node which has more decision power than other nodes. Whereas uh, distributed means, distributed is about work. And it tells where the work happens and where the data is stored. So where the data is processed and where it is stored. It means that every node in the network does its share of work. And that's very, uh, very how to say, uh, good uh, definition for uh, Bitcoin. Good, Bitcoin matches exactly these two uh, definitions because, it, because every node has the same authority and it is compute, it is um, doing almost uh, the same exact computations of every other node. And every node has in itself uh, a copy of the data. Um, the data, which is a blockchain. Uh, blockchain looks like this. I found this picture in the internet, it's not mine. Um, Literally, it is a chain of blocks. It's a very good name. Um, blocks which contain data. In case of uh, Bitcoin, it's a set of uh, transactions of the Bitcoin cryptocurrency. And uh, the important part is also that uh, yellow line. It, every block um, holds a reference to the previous block. And the blockchain is immutable. You can only append uh, new blocks at the end of it. Um, so here the part that uh, where I, I'm going to uh, skip over is actually how blocks are added to the blockchain. But briefly, um, computing, uh, like creating a new block, uh, which is co also called mining, is a very um, very expensive operation computationally. Uh, and Bitcoin adjusts 
the complexity, the Bitcoin protocol adjusts the complexity of this operation so that, in average, a new block will be added to the blockchain every 10 minutes. Um, the way that blocks are created and uh, yeah, mined, it's based on a proof of work. Basically, this is about the consensus mechanism. So since every node has the same authority, they need to agree that the, that the block that has been mined by a node is actually valid. And this is about the proof of work, but I will not go uh, through this because uh, I don't have time. Also about smart contracts, I will just say that they, they define the transactions or they define what should happen when the block is added to the blockchain. So in the Bitcoin case, they're kind of simple, um, simple programs that basically describe the transactions. The input, uh, the output, what are the parties involved, uh, the amount of uh, cryptocurrency that is to be exchanged. But in Ethereum, which is another uh, blockchain, uh, they can really do pretty much everything that uh, our computer programs can do. They can even fetch data from external sources and use that as a um, condition to decide whether a transaction or an operation has to be executed or not. For example, you could have like um, a transaction that is executed only if the value of Ether is more than X dollars or if the temperature in a certain city is higher than 20 degrees or something. Okay. Um, here I want mostly to talk about what are the issues with the blockchain. The first one, the most obvious one, is the energy consumption because mining a block, as I said, it's a, a very computational uh, expensive operation which every node in the Bitcoin network is doing at the same time. We are talking about uh, tens of thousands of nodes, if not more. So it has been estimated that the energy consumption of the Bitcoin network is about 50 terawatt hour per year, which is roughly equivalent to 5 million households in the United, in the United States. Ethereum is, uh, well, considerably, considerably less, about uh, five times less. And uh, yeah, there is, I mentioned here, uh, Prime Coin. It's another blockchain that tries to uh, mitigate maybe uh, the sense of waste <laughs> about this energy by actually uh, having a proof of work that involves helping uh, the finding of new prime numbers. If you think that finding a new prime number is uh, uh, is worthwhile uh, the energy when then it doesn't look like a waste anymore. And here I have a quote from the official Steam website. Steam is, is a yet another blockchain. And last year they had to lay off about 70% of their workforce. And one of the reasons they uh, mention uh, for this is exactly the growing cost of running full Steam nodes. Uh, the second problem is storage size. Uh, running a Bitcoin node requires about uh, 210 gigabytes. Uh, the, and this size is growing at a rate of uh, 5 gigabytes per month, about. Ethereum is a bit less, but it's uh, about the same. Uh, at which point, you know, this doesn't look that bad anymore to me. I'm making a joke, of course. We all know that this disk space is very cheap. But when you think that every node in the network is carrying an exact copy of the data, well, you see that it's not that efficient. But the, if we really want to find an issue is, in here, it's not much the uh, storage size, but the bandwidth, because all these new five gigabytes of data that I mentioned before, they're actually going to be exchanged over a peer-to-peer -peer network. It imposes some uh, bandwidth requirements on running a node. 
And then another issue is uh, speed. Uh, in uh, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin is uh, capable of uh, processing about from three to, f uh, to four transactions per second in average. And uh, Ethereum does a bit better. I think it's about 20 transactions per second, but we're talking like globally in the whole world. Whereas PayPal, a very centralized system, uh, has been shown to be able to process uh, more than 450 transactions per second. Visa is able to process 50,000 transactions per second globally. And um, one of the reasons is that the Bitcoin network or the blockchain networks in general, uh, yeah, they are doing the same work, all the nodes, they're doing the same work. So it's not that the overall speed of the network is equal to the sum of the speeds of every node. It's kind of more like, uh, I, I wouldn't say that it's the same as the fastest of the nodes. It's uh, better than that, but still it doesn't uh, grow exponentially or uh, proportionally how, how we would like it to. And this causes um, a small problem. Since you can process only these little transactions per second, if you want to prioritize a transactions to make sure that it happens in time, you need to request, uh, I mean, uh, a payment of a fee. So part of the uh, cryptocurrency or token that is being exchanged is being um, taken by the network, by the nodes doing the work. And last, but not least, uh, this might be a bit controversial, it's my opinion, at least, um, that uh, the Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general, they are increasing the wealth disparity. Why? Well, it's kind of simple because the more money you have, the better hardware you can afford, the better bandwidth you can have, which means that the more rewards you will get out of the network. And um, I want to talk now a bit about what uh, applications uh, the blockchains can have. And here I honestly want to say that I believe that Bitcoin and uh, cryptocurrencies are most likely the best applications for the blockchain. They're really, when I think of a blockchain, I think of them and I see that there is definitely a point in using a blockchain for these kind of systems. But then when we come to other applications, uh, I've here selected a few and you can judge for yourself. They have their meaning, but... So this is a voting application. So your vote ends up in the blockchain. But this software is not open source. The blockchain is not public. It's a private blockchain. At which point, I wonder, do I really trust this more than a state-run uh, electronic vote? I'm not sure. And then Mint Health Solution, you store your medical <laughs> records on the blockchain. And uh, yeah, the problem they're trying to solve is that all, I mean, many, many medical offices, they have different information about yourself. They not, there isn't a like, uh, real sharing of data. So they are trying to uh, overcome this using the blockchain. Then, okay, here it, we come a bit on the uh, strange part. So this application is about your wedding vows, vows on the on the blockchain. You can just store a sentence of love. Of course, you need to pay a small fee for that. And a similar one is uh, marriage on the block. And this one, you, it's about your marriage certificate, which is stored in the blockchain. Um, there was an interesting line here. No more standing in line to get married, to get the certificate or to update the marriage status. And even more important, it might be in some cases, is that 
you can update your marriage status in a few seconds, include divorcing. At which point, I mean, why am I keeping that sheet of paper in my drawer? I wonder if I have this. And then, I don't know if you're having some sense of déjà vu here. Ethereum, you're a shortener. Uh, if you have, it's wrong, because in order to shorten a URL through this service, of course, you are going to use some of your tokens, so you're going to pay, essentially. And this is a referral, pro referral platform, uh, Plentix. Uh, you can refer employees to companies, and you get rewarded in uh, tokens. So far, I was used at when I was referring someone to my company, I would get paid in uh, bonuses and real money, but here you get real tokens. Graffiti, uh, well, it says it quite clearly. You can archive anything in the blockchain. Again, it's uh, the, on the Ethereum uh, blockchain. It has uh, a cost, and if I remember correctly, it was about that 10 kilobytes of data cost about the equivalent of one dollar, then there will be a limit of the size that you can store. A very similar one is this one, not chain. Uh, on this one, you can even choose whether the uh, the note, that the data that you store, whether it's uh, public or private. And I wonder, like it's since the inception of the internet that we have been looking for a, a way to share share nodes. But finally, it is here. And steep shot is uh, uh, photo sharing. There is unfortunately a small limit. That is that uh, the photo cannot be larger than one megabyte. But we have compression, so who cares? And you get uh, money, you get uh, tokens if people like your photo. Oh, this is my favorite actually. Uh, paint blocks. So you have this canvas. It's uh, split into small squares, small squares, 20 by 20 pixels. You pay to get ownership of one square, and then you can paint it the way that you want. Until, of course, someone else offers more, and then he gets ownership of the block. And I think that by looking at the picture, you yourself will realize why you definitely need to to pay for this. But now we start getting serious because this is decentralized news network. We all know that media is fake, is biased. It's not, uh, it doesn't tell the truth basically. So let's move journalism to the blockchain. And here you have uh, readers who have to pay in order to access the content. And then writers have to pay in order to uh, submit an article for review, but then they get paid back if the article is published and if the readers like it. You have reviewers who have to pay in order to be considered uh, for reviewing the next article. And they get some money back if readers will like their, um, the article that they approved. And, and this um, decentralized news network has been featured in quite a few news outlets. So, I mean, it looks like uh, uh, serious stuff. <clears throat> and here I'm actually ready to bet with anyone that this is not going to fly. But please, if you want to bet, I, <laughs> I need some money. And... Uh, from news to absolute truth. This is a fact-checking application. How does it work? Uh, a, user, a user submits a claim from, from a news source, and then people vote whether the claim is true or false. Along with their vote, they put some money. At the end, after some period, the money is counted, and the party which has more money wins. And in this way, the truth is uh, established. And if you win, you also get uh, the money, well, part of the money of the party that uh, said uh, fake things. Sorry, I need to drink something strong. Uh, 
Okay, I feel better. <laughs> okay, uh, that was a small panoramic of applications that I randomly selected. I want to spend a couple of words to talk about the DAO, uh, Distributed Autonomous Organization. This was kind of an incubator for um, blockchain-based projects. It raised about 120 million in a crowdfunding campaign, and about one month later, it was hacked, and one third of the money, so 40 million dollars, were stolen, basically. And there's nothing special in this except that it was on the uh, it was run on the Ethereum blockchain. So the Ethereum community decided to fork their blockchain to the node, to the block, sorry, to the block before the hack happened. Basically to undo it. Uh, even though it's important to notice that this was not a bug in Ethereum that had to be fixed by forking. Ethereum didn't have, in this case at least, didn't have any bug. The bug was in the DAO, which is an application built on it. Still, the Ethereum community decided to <clears throat> to fork their blockchain to undo this. And of course, not everyone agreed. So the community didn't reach consensus. Uh, and that's why the people who didn't agree with this uh, decision, they continued using the unforked blockchain, which uh, now, nowadays is called as Ethereum Classic. Uh, why do I mention this? Because I think it highlights a problem with the, with the consensus um, mechanism and also about the decentralized nature of the blockchains. Because this decision to me shows that after all, uh, the, uh, at least the Ethereum blockchain is not really decentralized. If a small uh, if a small community can decide in this way, can take s such important decisions about the destiny. Uh, I was not sure whether to include this uh, slide at the end because it's a bit uh, misleading, possibly wrong, because the placement of these labels on the quadrants actually depends a lot on the underlying implementation. Uh, but what the point that I wanted to make is that maybe when you are developing an application, you don't always need both decentralization and uh, distribute, distributed. So you can choose between the two. And if you don't need both of them, then I would say that the blockchain is most likely not the best uh, solution for your, uh, for your problem. Uh, I want to conclude with uh, this. So, security versus insurance. <clears throat> uh, the blockchain gives you security. It is secure, but it doesn't give you insurance. So, my credit card has a PIN of four digits. And these things get stolen and hacked all the time. But when that happens, I can go to my bank and get a complete refund. Bitcoin or other uh, cryptocurrencies are uh, secure, really, by design. They are secure, but of course it's software, so bugs can happen, and I'm not going to tell you how many times uh, such bugs have been found and money has been stolen, and in that case, it's a decentralized network. You don't have anyone to go to. <clears throat> then, uh, decentralization versus real world, it means that the real world is not decentralized. We have countries, they have borders, they, have, they make wars between each other, they have sanctions. So if you are going to send uh, millions of um, cryptocurrencies to someone in uh, Venezuela or, uh, uh, or North Korea, it's not necessarily going to make uh, their life better. They will not be able to, to use them. And I think that... Um, the cryptocurrencies are good to evade some limitations, but in practice, I'm afraid that only the, 
not, not only, but uh, those who make most, who can pos potentially make most advantage of them are people who, are, uh, who have a lot of money because of illegal activities. And uh, last, the blockchain in its uh, bare form, like the one that I saw on the third slide, the chain of blocks, it's a very, very good way to have uh, immutable storage. However, it's not different from a signed backup. Sometimes you don't really need a blockchain. If you really want to <coughs> have immu immutability, you can have a signed backup, hashed backup, I mean, and, uh, well, a lot of redundancy. And that was all. Do we have time for questions? I think, yeah. Any questions? I see your question. <clears throat> uh, hi, I really liked what you said about that um, it's mainly when you need both decentralized and distributed that you actually need blockchain. So do you see blockchain being actually and effectively used in something else other than currencies and even speculative currencies? Um, well, I don't have any uh, concrete um, examples, but I would say digital goods, possibly. The problem is about the size, because they, now uh, Bitcoin stores transactions, it's very, they don't require a lot of uh, storage. If you're going to put in there some kind of certificate, of course the size grows, and you really want to have, like the security of Bitcoin um, is also enhanced by having a large network of nodes. So large network of nodes also means a uh, large replication of data, and again, all the issues that I mentioned before. So I think having digital content in there, it's going to make the situation worse. So in practice, I am not excluding the possibility of using it for more things, but it should be something that doesn't take that much space, in my opinion. We have time for one more question. Otherwise, thank you. Thank you.